Paul Bunyan's legendary logging skills may have been the stuff of myth, but as Connor Knighton discovered, lumberjacks and lumberjills are the real deal. One, go. At the Lumberjack World Championships, there is never a dull moment. Razor sharp axes, go. And saws of all sorts slice through logs of aspen. But the competitors aren't chopping wood, they're climbing it up to 90 feet in the air, racing across it. Great recovery there. Rolling on it. Over the course of one summer weekend in Wisconsin, there are more than 20 different events. The festivities begin with a ceremonial log roll lighting of the torch. This has been called the Olympics of the Forest. This year we've got competitors from the Czech Republic, Sweden, Japan, Canada, and the United States. Nancy Knudsen does marketing for the Lumberjack World Championships, which have been held in the small town of Hayward, Wisconsin since 1960. If it weren't for Lumberjacks, we wouldn't be standing here. Logging was the industry of Hayward? It was. It was the reason why Hayward is here. More than a century ago, Lumberjacks came to this part of Wisconsin to log the white pine forests. Here, and in timber towns all across the country, Lumberjacks would occasionally wager on who could chop the fastest or climb the highest. Up to the top, and then... Those oh. informal contests eventually morphed into a full-on sport. Today, competitive lumberjacking can be found everywhere from local fairs and festivals to internationally televised events. Honestly, I kind of thought everybody would be dressed like this. Yep. Like everyone looks like they're about to go teach a Peloton class. <laughs> <laughs> Is this not the lumberjack attire? It's the unofficial lumberjack attire. Matt Koger is a full-time lumberjack athlete. He competes and trains year-round. He's traveled from his home in Grafton, West Virginia, to events across the world with his trusty axes in tow. You've got a bag full of six axes. Yep. What kind of murderer does the TSA think you are? <laughs> it's always challenging traveling on airplanes and stuff. While there is some prize money involved, the vast majority of these competitors have other jobs. They do it for the love of logging. It's super hard to make a living at competitive lumberjack sports right now. You have to travel and you have to win. Um, that's probably the hardest part. <laughs> but Koger makes winning look easy. He's got two world records. Matthew Kogar gets the world record. And he's taken home seven overall titles at the Steel Temper Sports U.S. Championship. The first time he won first place, he beat out his second cousin. Matt Koger finishes a couple of hits ahead of Arden Koger. He's got this side, I'll get this side. Arden Koger Jr. lives a couple of hours away from Matt. They frequently train together. Arden was racking up records and titles when Matt was just a kid. The axe and saw has taken me around the world. I have been to Europe 26 times, and I've never had to pay for one trip. In between competitions, Arden is racking up billable hours. He's an attorney. His office is home to several mementos from his father's career. Arden Koger Sr. was one of the first nationally known lumberjack athletes. Arden Koger, and he is a man that's held those 15 world championships. There are records set by Arden Sr. in the 70s that still haven't been broken. My father was not an educated man. My father uh, stopped going to school when he was in the third grade. But he always wanted me to get as much education as I possibly could because he wanted me to do something different than what he did. The sport was about the only thing we had in common. And so the reason why I love it so much is because that's how I got to know my dad. Over the years, the sport has expanded to include a growing number of lumber jills. Martha King is not waiting around. One of the best is Martha King. She won the women's all around at the World Championships in 2019. The women cut several chopping events. My favorite is the underhands. That's where you stand on a block and chop between your feet. Who's it gonna be? That seems terrifying though, right? <laughs> if something goes wrong, like the most could go wrong in that. I don't even think about that anymore. My mom used to not be able to watch me at all. She'd say, I just have to close my eyes and listen for you to be done. 
Back home in Chadsford, Pennsylvania, King works for her family's tree service business. It's a job which provides an unlimited supply of practice wood. It also provides a link to the world which produced these wood chopping techniques. Every event that we do or every discipline that we compete in is based on a traditional practice in forestry. Once the tree is down on the ground, it might be 100, 150 feet long. How are you going to move that thing? So that's where the underhand chop comes into place. King made the finals in all of her events in Wisconsin and took fifth place overall in the women's division. Number Jill's Aaron Lavoie and Stephanie No tied for first. Matt Koger on station two. Matt Koger won nearly all of his events, taking home his third men's overall world championship title. It's a small enough world that most of these athletes know each other. They see each other at all the same events. Events where, who knows, a future lumberjack or Jill athlete may just be sitting in the stands. We are highly competitive, but at the end of the day, if we want to see the sport succeed, we've got to work together. It's a wonderful community, and it's really enriched my life. 